Yeah, so once we've collected samples from the field, as is seen with SCAT, and what we also see here in my left hand is a blood sample that was collected uh, during a darting exper or darting uh, operation of whether generally like the to collar animals, one always collects blood. And this blood, uh, unlike the SCAT, contains a high um, or a fair amount of DNA concentration. But of course, we can't just really take, take this blood and put it into our machine and run it. We have to first take it through a bit of a process. So we take it out, we put it into little tubes uh, where we add certain chemicals to it. Because the first part of our DNA extraction, we always have to break down all the cells that's within here as to release our DNA. So if we picture a mammal cell from our high school biology, we've realized that there's a nucleus, there's mitochondria, there's ribosomes, there's a bunch of things that are in there, but there's also the cell, um, cell membrane. And so we have to break that cell membrane apart as to release everything within the cell. Because within that cell, we are mainly interested in this nucleus, because that's where our DNA sits and our chromosomes. It makes us who we are. Uh, so with taking it, we put this into a heating block at about 56 degrees with some enzymes called protein kinase that degrades any proteins and any other substances uh, that basically degrades it and breaks it apart for us to release all of our DNA. After that, we spin it a few times until we get to this step. So this is a, a spin filter or a column spin, DNA mini spin column filter. Uh, so this one is quite unique, and this is part from the kits that we use, because uh, this is a bit easier to extract. You can see if one looks closely, there's a filter on the inside here. So basically what this filter does is, we put our, ex or our extracted products that we've got from here, uh, that comes clearer, we put onto this filter over here. And then we centrifuge. The centrifuge is something that just turns around uh, very fast, a lot of RPM, very much like uh, like your fan, and it spins everything. So a lot of stuff just filters through this filter. But this filter is a certain size that keeps behind your DNA to keep it intact on this filter perspective. So after we have extracted our DNA using this techniques, uh, we always have to visualize, because we always have to consider it's great and all to just extract, but you never really know what you're extracting or what quality it is or how good it is. And so to do this, we sort of, uh, we run a agarose gel. So an agarose gel is just um, one that we'll be setting up in a bit. It's, it's one that we basically gonna make that we can load this DNA sample in together with a um, loading die as well as um, a, a or an activator for, for the fluorescence will also be inside the gel. So one thing we have to note is why we add loading dyes, because if we just put this DNA in water, it will just float and escape. And what we have in an agarose gel, we have what we call wells to put our DNA in, as well uh, that's within a liquid together with a loading dye to give it a weight. So that it, sits with, it sits in the bottom of the well and runs in a straight line. Uh, where after we've done that, we'll run it at a voltage of about 140 volts for 20 minutes. And what makes DNA quite cool is, and what we always think about too, also mentioned is, it all comes down to chemistry. It all comes down to positives and negatives. So DNA is of course negatively charged. So when we run it on this uh, gel system, the, se the method of separation is due to charge. So it goes towards the positive pole, from the negative to the positive pole. And we can visualize this a lot uh, with a lot of different things as well, depending on your charge. But this is a very simple, neat way to just uh, see if you have good quality DNA. But of course, we will still not see much because you can't see DNA with the naked eye. But because of the fluorescent uh, dyes that we've added with it, we can put this on a UV table. So a UV table emits a UV light that what we consider excites the, chem uh, the compounds of the dyes within the gel that binds to the DNA and that it gets excited by the UV light. And then it gives us a bright color, or bright or faint color depending on your DNA concentration. But it gives us a color to show this is what your quality of your DNA looks like. And then we can evaluate, is it degraded? Is it not degraded? As well as what the concentration is by looking at our, what we have as a lambda hint, for instance, to look to say this is X amount of concentration. But then we can confirm at the end to say, we have collected a sample, we've extracted, and we've extracted good and collected good and quality DNA that we can use for further analyses, uh, using additional um, PCRs and for sequencing and all the rest. Mm -hmm.